All right, here we go. So graphic design one. Today we're gonna to be talking about uh, a handful of topics in terms of kind of the, the real general sense of not just graphic design, but really just design, okay? Uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna relate it to both the kind of graphic design design process, but also to the architectural design process, okay? As that's, that's truly what I'm really most uh, familiar with, okay? So first slide, the function of design. So what is design, okay? Or what is, I guess you could say, this, this slide's a little bit more related to what is graphic design. Uh, if you break it down into a, just a very short description, graphic design or design is the communication of messages through the juxtaposition of words and pictures, okay? Uh, it is the visual synthesis of thought. So it's how does everything on uh, what it is that you are designing, how does it all come together in terms of the color, the text, the layout? How does everything work together, the harmony between it all? So when we say the juxtaposition of words and pictures, you as designers are ultimately telling a story, okay? You are telling a story to an audience and you, it is your responsibility to do that correctly, okay? Um, and it's important to, to, to kind of understand no matter what kind of designer you are, whether you're a photographer, whether you're an architect, landscape architect, graphic designer, uh, you know, maybe you do websites, uh, etc. cetera. Um, the design is always apparent, okay? No matter what you're doing, whether or not you're just typing a letterhead that you're going to send to a client, the overall presentation of that uh, matters okay and people notice that people notice as a designer or an architect they notice all of those little details uh, and you, you know I even look at things like uh, when people send them to me like a proposal for work and I notice that they just typed it up with no uh, you know with no order you kind of just notice those things so the kind of the point of this is regardless of what you're doing whether it be a small or a large task uh, it's important to keep the design thought always in mind because me as a designer, me as an architect, um, I notice all those things and I'm really critical of how all these little things come together and how these things work. Everyone may not always notice those things, but in the design world, people are critical of that. So, and as a designer, I'm constantly working with other designers, whatever field or industry that they're in. So I know they think very similar uh, to me. So design objectives. So what are some of your objectives when you guys are putting together a design? Okay, uh, let's just run through all these. Uh, guidance, uh, it is your job as a designer to, to guide your client or to, or to guide them to the end goal of what they're looking for. Uh, it is your job to per, uh, persuade, it is your job to encourage, it is your job to communicate, uh, motivate, educate, uh, we also have dialogue, inspiration, promotion, uh, information, awareness, and direction. So you have a lot of responsibilities as, uh, as a designer, okay? Um, and the reason why a lot of these exist is because the person who's hiring you to do that, uh, most of the time they have no clue what it is ultimately that they're looking for, okay? They might have an idea, and we'll talk about this here in a second, but a lot of times they really rely on you to come up with that idea. They might give you uh, a general direction and where they feel they need to go, but it's your, it's your job to kind of suck that out of them, to figure out what it is that they really, really want, okay? So you'll see lots of these little slides today that just kind of show some kind of basic graphic design. I probably won't talk about all of them. Okay, so the first thing, establishing function. So this is typically kind of one of the first steps of the design process and I'll, and I'll actually go through all like the six or eight steps or whatever it is of the design process in a second. But the first thing you should always ask yourself is uh, what is the purpose of the design? Uh, is it an invitation? Is it a poster book? Is it a, is it a website? Is, uh, what is it that you're doing, okay? Uh, what is the primary objective of it? Are you going to be uh, printing this? Are you going to be putting it on the web? Are you going to be handing out this flyer out to people walking around DVC? 
So it's good to kind of understand uh, all the overall parameters of which is or which it is that you are working for, towards. Okay, who is your audience? Is it people like you? Is it other designers? Is it homeowners? Is it people with kids? Uh, these are all the questions that you really need to ask when you're kind of starting to uh, map out what it is that you're going to be designing. Okay. Uh, we're going to talk about in a second the importance of the design process and all of these things will all fit into that design process, okay? And you'll learn that it's very important not to skip uh, any of those steps, okay? What is the desired reaction? So who is your, you know, that actually goes back to who is your audience? You're not going to get the same reaction from every person. Some people will hate it. Some people will love it. Uh, you're going to have mixed emotions from everybody, but ultimately you typically have a desired reaction from a typical or from a specific audience. I might be doing a movie poster that is for a horror film. Well, ultimately, I have a very specific target audience for that movie poster. I know it's not going to be six-year-old kids. I know it's not going to be... Uh, no, I guess it could be really anyone a little bit older than that, but you probably get the point is that you, you should understand who the audience is before uh, getting really started. Okay, it is the designer's responsibility to create strong communicative experiences that support the function of the design on behalf of the client for the viewer, okay? This comes back to ultimately being responsible for your design. Don't rely on the person who's hiring you to give you all of these different parameters, okay? It's your job to really suck them out of the person that you're trying to, or the person who has hired you to ask all of the right questions. Okay, so what are some of your skills? This kind of, this kind of continues on uh, the slide that we just had uh, a second ago in, in design objectives. These all link to those objectives. Uh, some of your skills as a designer include analysis, perception, okay, communication, which is in my opinion, one of the most important once is being able to communicate with the person, uh, with people around you and the person who, who hired you. Good, good communication skills ultimately lead to usually a happy customer. You can usually get yourself out of a, you know, bad situations if you need to, if you can just be a good uh, communicator. Okay, so um, communication, very, very important. Research, okay? The ability to go out and find new ideas. What's the end topic right now? What are people doing? Uh, and that's you know very important to always be uh, on the forefront of innovation and design. What's what's the popular thing going on right now? Management. Uh, it's your job to be a problem solver. It's your job to figure out, or or at least to help the client and what his problem is. Why is he hiring you? He's obviously hiring you for a reason. He's not just uh, looking for a new website just because, or just because, because he has extra money in his bank of account and he just really wants to spend it. I suppose that could be an option, but uh, usually he's hiring you for a reason, so it's your job to figure out wh what that reason is. Uh, we have visualization, composition, how do things come together. Dialogue, organization, uh, systemization, information gathering, critical thinking, and representation. Okay, we'll actually kind of dive into all these things here uh, as we continue to go through. Let's talk a little bit about inspiration. This is actually kind of a fun little topic because uh, there's really not one answer to, to um, oh, you know what I think I did? Did I ever hit record? I don't think I did. Oh, I did, sweet. All right, I just kind of had that thought in my head, like, I don't think I'm recording myself right now. Anyways, inspiration. The reason why I like to talk about this is because everybody has a different way of inspiring themselves, right? What might inspire me may mean, not, <coughs> may mean sorry, <coughs> may not even be close to what inspires you, you or you, okay? Um, so first topic, it uh, should, should not be a chore or require extra effort. If you're in here and ultimately want to be a designer and want to be a designer and you find it a real big challenge to find inspiration, I would think about rethink your career a little bit. A part of being a good designer is the ability to find easy inspiration. But uh, I won't say that it's always easy. Uh, you will definitely have your mental blocks and uh, your times when it's challenging to do so. 
but ultimately, and you think of it as the long road, is it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be a chore to find inspiration. It should be a part of your DNA uh, to be able to uh, to be able to do that. Okay. It comes from the desire to create or communicate. So as a designer, let's get rid of that. As a desire, I constantly have, um, I kind of constantly have the need to create something. I like to, uh, I like to touch things. I like to hold things. I like to kind of figure out how things work. That's part of my inspiration and, and how I work. So all that comes from the desire to create and communicate. Don't forget to look inward and tap into your own creative inspiration. Whatever, whatever it is that you do to get inspired, always do it and keep doing it, okay? No matter how interesting or weird it might be, it's okay. And I promise you, you can look into big famous architects, designers, painters, whoever. A lot of them could be some very interesting people that do some things that I would never even think of. Who knows what they do to get inspired, but if it works for them and you get really nice material, do it all the time, okay? Sketchbooks, how many people here have a sketchbook? Just curious. Sketchbook, one, two, now you probably three. You probably won't have one and if you're not in the architectural studio, but uh, it, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to be an architect to have a sketchbook. Lots of people have one just for jotting down or jotting down notes and ideas. Um, I have one in my bag still. It's actually, let's see, here it is. It's actually kind of a crumpled up piece of paper. This is actually a bunch of paper that I, uh, I messed up in my office and I just shredded it up into a bunch of little pieces and I use this for taking notes and drawing little things and, and putting down ideas for the future. Um, so a ske sketchbooks are great because they allow you to collect physical things that inspire you and place them in a safe and frequently accessed place. I'm sure a lot of you guys as designers and students, uh, how many people here have you know, been watching a movie or something at 10 o'clock at night and you're like, light bulb comes off and you have that idea? Well, if you haven't done it, it will, it will happen. And if, you're in, if you're in architecture school, I guarantee you, you've probably done it in the past. So it's good to have uh, a place where you can write down your thoughts, your ideas. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like a journal for, for, for designers, if you will, okay? So write notes, make drawings, take photographs. You can do whatever you want in your sketchbook. There's no rules and, and really uh, ways in exactly how you do that, okay? Um, collect physical things that inspire you and place them. Oh, that's just the same thing with, different, uh, with a different picture. I'm not sure why I did that. So how do we nurture inspiration? So how do we continue to always do that? Uh, and this goes back to how everyone has different ways of nurturing, nurturing inspiration. Carry a notebook or a camera. I actually had a guy that I worked with um, at Field Paoli in San Francisco. He was probably, <laughs> he actually looked exactly like Santa Claus. He, and he actually was Santa Claus. He was a Santa Claus <laughs> at the mall. That was his part-time thing every, uh, uh, every Christmas, but he had a full white beard and white hair, but he was a very interesting little character that had been as an architect for like 40 years, and he carried around a big DSLR camera everywhere he went. He got on the ferry every day to work, and he found inspiration by just the city and the things around him, and he was constantly taking pictures uh, and spending like half an hour every morning showing them to me. Uh, but that's just one way. Uh, become immersed in design. Uh, commit to discovering and collecting inspirational uh, factors. Uh, one thing about inspiration is is always is always allowing yourself to be inspired. And uh, something that I'll talk about. Uh, maybe I don't have it on the slide anymore. Uh, something that uh, I always like to say is, uh, or when I was just saying to always kind of allow yourself to be inspired. Don't be afraid to put down your cell phone a little bit, put away the TV, uh, and allow yourself to really notice these things. Because you won't, if you're constantly immersed, and, I, and I'm guilty as charged of everything that I'm saying right now, because I, I, I do it. But I try to catch myself and, <laughs> and tell myself not to. But don't, you know, don't be afraid to put away the things that ultimately distract you. Because when you're distracted constantly, and that's really the world that we all live in right now is we're constantly distracted. And the way this world works, it's all designed for you to be distracted. But it allows you to miss out on these opportunities of ultimately getting you uh, inspired. 
uh, you know, a great example uh, actually today was uh, just driving to go pick up something from a client. I saw a material on a building on the corner of my eye that actually had been looking for a material like this for like six months. And it caught me at the corner of my eye and I ultimately had five minutes to go in and look at it, touch it, take pictures of it and figure out what it was. And I solved a problem that I've been trying to solve for six months because I was just aware of what was going on around me. And, and it's, you know, it's ultimately, it's really hard to do that these days because we're all so immersed in so many other things. So uh, think about that. Uh, take a walk, listen to music. How many people here listen to music to get inspired? I'm one of those people for sure. I, I'm guilty every day at my office of putting on my, my Bose headphones and my boss will talk to me and he's, he's like 85 years old and he doesn't understand what headphones are and he'll talk to me for 45 minutes and realize I didn't hear a single word he said. But um, I get inspiration from music and I like to work with good music. Sometimes it's, you know, it's metal, sometimes it's uh, jazz and it's, it's just kind of whatever I'm feeling that day. Uh, explore other areas of interest. Attend conferences, lectures, and events. If you don't know, there's great lecture series here at DVC, and actually one of our assignments that we're going to do is a DVC lectures uh, lecture series where we talk about architecture and new innovative design and green building and all these different things. I went to those things as much as I possibly could as a student, especially when uh, you just don't know a lot, okay, and you're students, and I was the exact same way, and I still don't know a lot. Uh, but go to these things just to fill your minds up with things that will help inspire you, okay? Go out and explore, try new things, okay? Inspiration is the first step towards the final design. So if you can't get the, inspira or if you can't get the inspiration that you ultimately need, you're going to have a hard time getting to that end product. So it's good to always just always be open and ready to be inspired. <clears throat> So the design process, let's talk about the design process a little bit. Uh, and we're gonna talk about each one of these little steps or each one of these seven steps in, in kind of a, a mediocre detail, okay? We have research, information gathering, brainstorming, conceptualization, experimentation, development, and execution. And it's very important and everyone has their own design process, okay? Whether you're an architect or you're a graphic designer or a photographer. Uh, if you're a photographer, it probably ultimately kind of relates to what we talked about a few weeks ago in terms of the process of uh, turning on your camera to downloading all your photos. That's all a part of your design process. And as an architect, I very much go through every one of these seven steps. Uh, and they might all vary a little bit, but I try very hard to make sure that I uh, go through every one of these. Okay. What's really important about these steps is you can't skip them okay and no it's it's hard to say that you can't do that you're gonna find yourself under time crunches where you uh, you just you know you thought of the idea that morning and you're gonna run right to the end and trying to develop this idea in a couple hours and present it I promise you very rarely does that work because it's really a step-by-step -step, uh, it's really a step-by-step -step process on how this all works it takes trial and error to get to the end product. It takes failure and it takes uh, understanding what you did wrong and it takes talking to other people about your design to getting towards uh, the right process. Okay, so don't skip the steps, whatever you do. Uh, you can't focus on the final product and that's a part of not, or not skipping uh, the steps. Um, very rarely do you think of a, a really good idea from the very beginning and that final idea is exactly what you the first thing that you you thought of it's an evolution uh, throughout the entire process your ideas will continue to evolve and you'll continue to get new inspiration to uh, work towards that that final product but don't uh, well actually in a, in, a, in a little bit we'll actually talk about the ability to letting an idea go uh, so don't focus on that final product all the time. Continue to focus on, on the individual steps. Design is an evolution. Uh, every step must have your full attention. So it's really good to not only don't skip the steps, but make sure you give the full attention to all of those steps. Yes, it can be exhausting, okay? Because it takes time. But in the end, I promise you, and I'm sure a lot of you guys have are starting to figure this out, the end process is extremely rewarding. When you've been working on that, you know, that one project for six months, 
or in my case, gosh, uh, I have some projects that we were doing design for two years, construction documents for two years, planning was another year, finally took two years to get billed and the whole process was 10 years. And you're like, holy cow, it is exhausting. But the end result of seeing that thing done is one of the greatest feelings in the world. And you can, a lot of you guys can relate it to finishing, you know, working on a model for, you know, a month. And you guys finally finish that model and you do that presentation, your thesis teacher uh, or your studio teacher loves the product and you feel like a million bucks. So uh, at the end, it's, it's extremely rewarding. So here we have our first, uh, our first step, okay? And uh, let's talk about uh, the program brief. This initiates the design process, okay? It is a meticulous overview of, uh, over the, uh, of the project. So this is where you sit down with your client and you discuss all of the problems. What are the issues and, uh, that you're ultimately trying to figure out? Okay, so this is when you sit down and you start to uh, define the roles within the project team. Who's doing what? Uh, who's responsible for, you know, ultimately uh, getting towards that end goal? Okay, uh, defines the roles of the designer, the client, and the, the, and the viewer. Okay, so all but I kind of, if you can kind of summar, summarize all of these, uh, it's really, I would say, number three is where you're addressing what the problem is and how you're going to address it okay so this is continued the project uh, here we have the project brief we're going to continue to talk about the program so this is where you begin with information given to you by uh, the client and this varies greatly you will have clients that have no clue what you want I have clients for example that don't know a lick about architecture they just have a very large pocketbook and they want to develop a building. They don't care what it looks like as long as they're bringing in that revenue from that tenant. Okay, so you have those people that are very hands off and don't know anything, and then you have people that, uh, you know, went to business school that and uh, love to be a part of the whole process, and they have all these great ideas, which is great as well. Uh, so that information could vary greatly. All right, this is the time to clarify and to simplify all of the information. So this is the time when you as the designer or the architect are asking the questions, figuring out what the problems uh, ultimately are. It is the designer, uh, the designer is ultimately responsible for asking the questions to clarify all of the missing pieces. Because at the end, if uh, something fails or if something doesn't work, who's all, who's responsible? You are. You are responsible. It doesn't matter. It doesn't even matter what the what the reason is. If it doesn't work right, you are responsible always. So it's your job to figure out what those problems are so that you can solve them. Define the primary goals and messages to be expressed. Okay, uh, you can relate this back to who your audience is, who uh, or who the audience is, and what's the message that you're trying to convey. Uh, this is a great time to talk about budget. Ooh, it's such a nasty word, budget. Makes and breaks every project that you talk about. I can't count the number of times I've, I'm in my head, I'm like, yep, this project's gonna cost about 10, 12 million dollars. What's your budget, three? All right, let's, let's rethink this entire thing. So, but it's always, a, it's always a topic of conversation that you're gonna have with every client is, is what is the budget. So you, can just, so you can define what the restrictions are of the project. This is what you can ultimately afford for the money that you want to spend. And as a designer, you should be really good at doing whatever it is that they have a budget for. Uh, if someone wants to remodel a bathroom, and they only, or if they wanna remodel, let's say, a kitchen, and they only have $1,000 to do that, it's your, it's your responsibility as a good designer to come up with creative ways to have a good end result. Will the end result be as good as if they have a $100,000 budget to remodel the kitchen? No, it's not. But uh, there's ultimately good solutions for whatever budget somebody has, so it's your job to figure that out. Number six, define a timetable for completion. How long is it gonna take? And it's your, it's your job to kind of break that down into usually kind of uh, uh, you know, a calendar of, of events on how the whole process will span out. And lastly, define uh, who your audience is. Who's gonna be the users of the building that you're working on, or who's gonna be the audience of the uh, website that you're creating, okay? Step two, gathering. 
Uh, this is the time where you collect all the textual and visual elements to be used, okay? If I'm an architect, this is when I, uh, and this will be very related to research, which will be, I think is the next step. Uh, this is the time when I start to gather inspirational images. I might create like an inspiration board or kind of just an idea board in general of uh, what it is that I'm trying to accomplish. It's a really quick way to try to show the client um, what the end result might be. I might show him some different buildings, some other buildings that are already complete, some materials that I think will work well for this so that uh, one, you're inspiring creativity for yourself, but you're also inspiring creativity for the client. They're getting, it's kind of getting them excited to start to dive into this process and, and to get their project going. If anything is missing, request it from the client or define who will create the missing pieces. Uh, is there anything that you're missing that will ultimately keep you from, you know, putting the, uh, the pedal to the metal, okay? Is there anything that's keeping you from really getting started on the project and doing your job correctly? Uh, as I mentioned, the next step would be research, information, or you know, kind of informa information gathering continued. This helps you gain an understanding of the topic. Um, uh, a question that you might ask yourself is, you know, what are other successful projects that you know might be similar to what you're working on? This is usually a time when I'll ask my client, "All right, I'm doing a retail shopping center uh, for you." Uh, are there any other retail shopping centers that maybe you really like? Maybe there's some that you've spent time in recently that you felt worked really well. Maybe they had some outdoor spaces that really made a really large impact on you when you were going through that. So it's a good time to uh, research those things and uh, figure out what the client really likes. Read, evaluate, and understand uh, all the provided materials, things that your client gave you. Maybe you have program briefs from the city that's usually half the battle is for me as an architect, I'm reading all of my restrictions that I have, things like codes, things about uh, uh, all the different requirements the city might have in terms of where the building should be located, the materials that they want you to use. So this is the time to read and evaluate, all right? Independently research additional information, uh, review the client's current communication materials, and lastly, investigate competitive markets. So this kind of ties into what other people are doing well and what they're not doing well, okay? Because you don't want to build the same thing as somebody else. You don't want to build some, you know, if you have a, if you have a restaurant that serves really super good Chinese food across the street from you, you, you know, it's probably a good idea that you don't come in and put a Chinese food restaurant right across the street if they're already doing it really, really well, okay? That's a super broad uh, example, but uh, it's important to investigate what's going on around you and how they do it. Okay, what are they doing well and what are they not doing well? Brainstorming, uh, practice free writing, create maps and create diagrams. Uh, we're actually gonna talk about later on in the semester the importance of diagramming and I'm sure your studio teachers probably, uh, if you're in architecture school, probably hound you on that all the time. Uh, so create uh, things like diagrams, maps and, and whatnot. Write down lists and thoughtful ideas, okay? Build visual inspiration boards as I mentioned earlier. Sketch, 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 sketch. Uh, it's pro sketching is, I can't even express how important it is, especially if you are a designer. Um, and it's, I'll admit, it's a really tough thing for a lot of young designers because we have so many great electronic and digital tools accessible to us all the time. And I know it's tough for me too, someone who likes to just pull up Revit or AutoCAD or any of the programs that we're gonna talk about this semester and just start doing stuff but I promise you that you'll always get an idea off quicker just doing a quick sketch, okay? And trying to express the idea with a, with a quick, you know, with, a, with one of these things that we call a pencil. I was gonna say a pencil, but that's a pen. A pencil, pencil. Okay, so don't be afraid to sketch in to get across your ideas quickly. Conceptualization, so this is the stage when your ideas start to turn into an actual plan, okay? This is where you start to pull out the sketchbook and the trace paper and you, you have some good ideas and what's gonna happen. This is where you actually start to make, uh, you actually start to uh, actually get some actual, uh, you're starting to see the, the work come to life, okay? You're starting to create some actual, you know, some actual subject, okay? This plan is the thematic link 
between the design, the function, and the delivery, okay? Next, experimentation, or this is the development stage of uh, the whole design process. This is where uh, multiple studies of color, composition, typography, this is where you actually start to get, you're starting to see uh, you know, near end results of, of what it is that you're working on. Relating it more to architecture, this is where I start to figure out how the building actually works. So I've probably submitted my design to the city They've approved it, but now it's my job to actually say, okay, how do I actually turn this into an actual building? How does the glass come together with uh, the roof above, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's actually making everything work, okay? This is where you develop treatments, uh, relating it back to graphic design. This is where you develop treatments for illustrations and photography. Uh, the sequence of how these uh, steps can vary sometimes, so vary the sequence. Uh, and a lot of times you may have to do that to kind of spark the creativity again. If you ever get bogged down in one, maybe jump forward a little bit and try to get, uh, try to fill in some of the other blanks and then maybe go backwards a little bit. So be afraid, don't be afraid to, to kind of uh, switch things up a bit. Try something different, try something new. Introduce new graphics, shapes, and lines. If you find yourself stuck in a rut, um, you know, switch it up a little bit. Try to just, you know, throw some new ideas, throw some, find some new graphics that might help uh, inspire you. All right, go for a walk, listen to some music. Okay, and finally we have execution. So this is where we distown, or distill down the best ideas from all of the different phases below, okay? This is where you're starting to see the end product of what it is that you're working on. This is where you start to examine every little detail. This is where, in, for architecture, I'm looking at all the little detail drawings that I've done and, and making sure that they all work. So probably one of the most important uh, topics from this whole conversation that we're having today is this idea of divorcing from attachment. And I promise you guys, all as designers, and I've done this a hundred times, you're gonna think of an idea that right off the get-go, you are absolutely in love with. And it's really, really, really hard to accept the fact that that might not be the right idea, okay? You will have times when you thought of an idea the day before, you spent all night modeling this thing and sketching these ideas, and then you go and you present it to your, your uh, studio instructor and it's just not the right thing. They're just not a fan of it and they're not, uh, you know, ultimately they're pushing you to try something different. Well, it's super, super important to be able to uh, divorce yourself from this original idea. And I, in fact, I honestly deal with it on a weekly basis when I have a, you know, half the time my ideas might be really, really good. My boss will love it, my client will love it. Sometimes the client just won't like it. And as much as uh, you know, I have strong opinions about my design and I am protective of my design, uh, you have to be able to just let it go sometimes. You have to just be able to scratch it, start all over, and uh, think of something else. All right, analyze uh, ob or objectivity. Um, if you ever get to the point where, um, Actually, let me come back to that one. I have a, I had a good thought about it, but I've started to kind of space from it. I'm gonna come back to that. Uh, this is also the time when you review the project brief. So this is the time when you are towards the very end of your project. Don't be afraid to go back to where you started from the beginning and you started to write down maybe some of these design objectives. Are you still meeting those design objectives? Are you still, uh, you know, the client had three things they ultimately wanted to uh, to get from spending this money that he's going to spend. Are you meeting all of those goals? Okay, if you're not, you need to step back, go back a few steps and start to rethink how you're doing things, okay? And lastly, produce the final draft of the project. So this is the time you're actually going to, you actually have created something to show your client or show to your peers, okay? Let's talk a little bit about intuition. So this is kind of that inner voice, if you will. And I'm sure everyone here has had, you know, you thought of the idea of the little devil and the little angel on your shoulder. Well, you guys are gonna have, a, you know, part of being a really good designer is that you have good intuition. And uh, kind of the main point of all this stuff is to be able to, to trust it, okay? Um, if you find yourself going back to this, uh, this fourth uh, bullet point here, 
if you find yourself constantly questioning uh, an idea, it's probably not the right idea, okay? It's when you have that good idea that you uh, you really, really like, don't be afraid to, to go with it and try with it. Sometimes you'll fail and sometimes uh, it won't end up working out the way that you want to, but I promise you that those good intuitions will, or that good intuition will have a greater benefit uh, in the end. Good comprehensions of techniques does not always equal good design. This is another really, really important one. Just because you're super good at using Photoshop or Revit or AutoCAD or you know V-Ray or SketchUp doesn't mean you're a good designer. It just means that you're really good at using that software, okay? Um, but ultimately, a really good um, understanding of both design and the different uh, tools that we use will be will ultimately result in a good end product. So just because you're not, just because you're good at the techniques doesn't make you a good designer. All right. Uh, so continuing on inspiration is a different level of thinking, and not everyone gets this right off the back. It's something that you ultimately de develop over a long period of time. It complements rational thought. Okay. So. Um, yeah, it complements rational thought. It comes naturally and it cannot be forced. So these are the thoughts that when driving home and you kind of think of that little that little light bulb goes off, that's usually where intuition ultimately starts. Those are the things that you want to jot down in your sketchbook and, and keep track of. It allows for thoughts that would not come from a from a rational thought process. If you if it takes you questioning, this goes back to you know, if it takes you questioning, uh, you know, a thought too many times, it's probably not the right thing. <coughs> so intuitive functions, uh, we have guidance, protection, inspiration, enlightenment, uh, and synthesis. These are all functions of good intuition. All right. Uh, so benefits of good intuition. Uh, good, intu uh, good intuition cultivates imagination. These are the thoughts that get you, get the brain flowing and get the gears ticking, okay? These are things that uh, good intuition or good intuition ultimately helps inspire, uh, you know, nice, creative imagination. It, is, it allows designers to move beyond their comfort zone. Usually it's when you test yourself and test your ideas when you get really good breakthrough design. I promise you guys that uh, myself and I would hope that all your studio teachers and other your other teachers, uh, if they're if you're in the design field, will never penalize you for really you know really uh, trying to um, capture a good design. If you're really passionate about something and you're kind of maybe testing the waters a little a little bit. Don't be afraid to go out there and try to, you know, show off that design. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, you'll, you'll sometimes you'll fail, sometimes you won't, but usually it's those uh, it's those moments when you're just not quite sure that end up being something uh, really, really beautiful. Okay, so benefits of good tuition continued often leads to fresh and innovative solutions. Okay. Uh, it often increases the number of ideas generated and lastly provides spark to push the design forward. All right. Any questions about any of that? All really big topics that uh, ultimately kind of have to settle in your mind. Um, but you'll realize that when it's happening, when you have good intuition and it's all and that idea is coming, uh, I really recommend, you know, going, going for it all the way. If it, if it means, and you'll have these times in architecture school where you, you know, you have that idea at 10 o'clock and you work till four o'clock in the morning, just developing that idea. But at the end, it's it's really worth it, and it's 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 rewarding, and that's why you become an architect. If you can't, um, and and ultimately a designer too. If you can't, uh, if you don't have the patience to kind of see that end goal and to work through all of these different steps, it'll be a tough journey for you. So you have to be able to kind of work the idea, get beat up a little bit. You're going to get brought down, but then work your way back up and and keep going through all those different steps. Challenges of intuition. Uh, you must allow your intuition to surface without worrying about the final outcome. It takes time to believe instincts that are valuable, okay? Don't prejudge or abandon without allowing the idea to mature, okay? So let the, let the idea process 
and uh, kind of work it out a little bit, all right? Talk to your peers, get some opinions, allow that idea to mature. Uh, it is not always useful or appropriate. So naturing or nurturing inspiration. Uh, don't be afraid to take risks. Listen to your inner voice and react. Okay, these are all kind of uh, things that are summarizing a lot of what we've talked about so far. Expect the unexpected. Okay, so expect for someone to challenge uh, to challenge your ideas. Okay, a lot of the times I'll always tell you or sometime in the in the semester I'll bring up the idea of always asking yourself why. So think of think of the things that people will will think of prior to sitting down and talking to them. Thinking of those those things will help you solve the problem and be prepared, okay? Don't overanalyze things, okay? So be don't be, you know, be afraid to don't be afraid to let something go and record your thoughts and collect visuals, okay? So sketchbook, idea of the sketchbook. I think that's about it. So this is the last slide we're going to finish off with a with a, just kind of a quote. In the design process, there are things that you think about for ration or for ration or sorry, let's start that over. In the design process, design process, there are things that you think about rationally. Those you learn about and those that you are looking for. And then there is the most interesting part you cannot be rational about. You just feel it for some strange reason. Uh, if you feel right, it will fit into the concept perfectly and make it more interesting and unique. So I'll just kind of let you guys, you can think about that if you want. Okay, so 723, let's take 10 minutes, all right? And then we're gonna jump into InDesign. We're gonna talk about our next assignment. We'll learn some new techniques. We'll talk about some old techniques as well. And we'll start moving forward on our new, on our new software. So let's come back at 735, okay? 735, 10 minutes.